G'day guys, and welcome to G-Man Speaks. Today, we're gonna to take a look at a video called Why You Should Never Live With A Woman. And it's by a YouTuber called Troy Francis, so go and check him out if you enjoy uh, this clip. Hi, it's Troy Francis coming at you from Warsaw in Poland with another video. You should never live with a woman. That's right, you should never live with a woman. Why not? Because it's a bloody nightmare, or at least <laughs> it can be a bloody nightmare. And the problem is that cohabitation often, not maybe not always, but often signals the death of whatever kind of cool, sexy, fun relationship yep. you were having before. Cohabitation is often the thing that kills it. And it's not just me saying this, this is the experience of literally hundreds of other dudes that I've spoken to over the years and exchanged notes about this with. Uh, cohabitation just messes everything up, basically. Why I'm going to say I agree to that um, to a large extent, right? But I think it's time. Time with somebody, regardless of if you're living together or not, will slowly erode that. That's just the way it goes, right? It's just nature, right? Where even as a guy, right, you'll slowly drop off as well. You know what it's like when you first get with a girl. You're really into her. She's really into you. You can't wait to see each other. You see each other once or twice a week. You're hanging for it all week to go and see her. You're thinking about how you're going to rip her clothes off and get her in the sack and all that sort of stuff. And she can't wait. You know, she's excited. She gets all dressed up, puts her best outfits on, does her hair, makeup, all that sort of stuff. She's looking top-notch for you every time you catch out. But as time goes on, guys, that sort of effort drops off, both from the male and female side. It's just the reality of it. So a lot of guys like to blame all oh, women, they trap you and all that. And they do in a lot of instances. But the guys also drop off on it too. So it's just the reality of time. Is that, well, a big factor in sexual attraction in maintaining sexual attraction is the potential for loss okay maybe that doesn't make sense or maybe that seems counterintuitive so let's unpack that the potential for loss so when you meet somebody and you guys are dating but you're not living together and maybe you haven't even promised exclusivity or anything like that then there's always that chance that you could just leave one day you could just say hey listen i'm not feeling this anymore and you could just pull out of it and she's going to be very aware of that okay she's also going to be aware that particularly if you've got your shit together you look decent you know you've got some social nous about you that there are other attractive women out there and there is the chance that you know you might get ensnared by one of those and you might look yeah i have to agree with that to an extent but come on, let's get with reality, guys. Regardless of how attractive you are, you got to you got to flip it over on its head. If you'll get a woman, if you're an attractive guy, you're obviously going to uh, attract attractive women. What do attractive women have? Limitless attention, limitless options. So they always have the chance to get rid of you quicker than what you're going to get rid of them. Yeah, you get these guys who are the top five percent or ten percent or whatever people like to say who can get women um, who are players. Uh, they're probably not the relationship types anyway, right? And so you might put anxiety on a woman because a lot of those guys, whether they do it on purpose or not, they use psychological warfare um, to get a woman's anxiety up. That's just the reality of it. And, he, and I think he'll probably end up talking about this. I think he's a pickup artist. Um, but the reality is, guys, it isn't because you're so great um, and then when you move in, then you can't go anywhere. Yes, that is a reality. It's very hard to get out once you're in. But you've got to think about it on the other side. The woman has limitless options and they can drop you at the drop of a hat. Or they can cheat and they can do all the things that guys do as well. So let's just let's just be balanced here as well, guys. Might leave her ass for somebody else. So there's that potential for loss there and that sparks competition anxiety okay that sparks sexual competition anxiety okay and so she is going to do her best to be on her good behavior so that she keeps hold of you basically and kind of vice versa as well yeah because you may think well we're not in it in something exclusive you know we're not in something that's defined and also we're not living together you don't know what she's doing on thursday night you don't know what she's doing on friday night so it's probably going to keep you on your best behavior as well okay it's probably going to keep you not simping for her but you know looking good work you know working out being in your best possible shape 
giving it 110 percent because exactly. you probably subconsciously want her to stay on side as well so it kind of it it's also it's not subconscious right right because a lot of these creators they make it like the guys the bees knees and the woman's just an add-on i don't fully agree with that right both people are putting their best foot forward both people are in very much trying to keep that person on the hook because they're, they're into them, right? That's why you'd be seeing each other. That's just the reality of it. It isn't the guy doesn't need to do anything and the woman needs to do everything to keep the guy on the hook. A lot of the time, it's the other way around. you got to chase, you got to go and spend money, dates, look good, be exciting, be the director of entertainment, all that sort of stuff. That's how you keep a girl on the hook, especially... Um, with these pickup artist guys, um, the sort of girls they go for, you know, the high maintenance, um, Instagrammy type chicks, right? They're just they're a black hole for effort and money. So I think a lot of some of these guys, and I'm not being critical of this gentleman, right? It's just some of the messaging is guy guys are the prize, which which I do agree with to an extent. I think both people are the prize because without two halves, you can't have a hole in a relationship, right? It's just the reality of it. We both bring different things. But they make out like the guy's the prize and the woman's just a little add-on. And I don't fully agree with that. It's like sort of fantasy land stuff, in my view. Kind of keeps both of you in line. When you live together, you move in together, that competition anxiety largely disappears. Okay, largely disappears. I mean, it doesn't disappear entirely because, yes, you could argue, well, if you're out all day or you're at work, Theoretically, you could do something, you, you could have an affair with somebody else while you're at work, or she could do the same thing while she's at work or whatever. But really, for the most part, that competition anxiety is dissolved because you're coming back to the same place every night, right? You are sleeping in the same place and you're coming back to that same apartment together every night. So, yeah, and it's, that's the one thing I sort of. I critically look at things, guys. So I'm not ragging this guy out or red pill dudes out or anything like that. So I'm not having a go at anybody. But, but I like to think about some of the messaging that a lot of these guys talk about, this competition anxiety. Why would you want to be with someone, right, if you're committing or dating, where there's competition anxiety on both sides? So I know a lot of guys get it too. Like these guys make it, the guys don't get it. Guys get competition anxiety. They get stressed. They don't know what the girl's out doing, all right? Like, why would you want to be with someone and then when you live with them, to have a competition anxiety where you're thinking she could have an opportunity if you're out at work all day or she's out traveling on business trips that she's out doing no good, right? What, what, why would you even want to do that in the first place? I, I just don't understand the point of it. You, you kind of you know it's a lot harder for you or for her to be going off with somebody else to put it crudely, okay? She is therefore going to feel a lot safer in the relationship as a result. And then she's not going to feel the need to work hard to placate you in the way that maybe she did before, okay? And also, she's gonna relax because basically what you've done is you have put yourself into a jail of your own making. You've willingly put yourself into a situation where she's kind of got the upper hand in the sense that... I think that's very true. And what a lot of guys do, and I've talked about this in some of my other videos, so he's, he's spot on with that point. I, I'll agree with that. You do put yourself in a jail of your own making if you don't vet women correctly. And I know guys will say you can never get rid of all the risk. You can't, right? But you can definitely go through and weed out the herd to try and get with someone who's best aligned with you, right? Who knows that you need to do certain things like your hotties, um, your gym, see your friends, see your mates, go out camping, and they're cool with that, right? You might want to play video games. You might want to chill and play your guitar or uh, build buddy, model trains or whatever it is you do. A lot of guys, they'll go with, that, go with a woman, move in within the first six months or a year or something like that, when they're all caught up in this lovey-dovey stage where everyone's on their best behavior, they're running around chasing a woman, they're losing part of themselves, they're not, you know, they, they might not tell a woman about some of their certain hobbies because they're ashamed of them, you know, you make model trains or you collect stamps or whatever it might be. And so you stop doing those things 
because you want to keep a woman attracted to you, right? So you haven't vetted the woman out and you've also haven't been forthright and upfront with who you are and you end up in your own prison. You, you can't go and do things that you want to do. You have to be attentive to her all the time. Um, you have to go and see her friends all the time. You discard all your friends. A lot of guys do that, right? They get with girls and then they all their friends get, you know, flicked off to the side. They don't maintain all those networks and things that they had when they were single. So then, yes, you end up in your own prison. But it is, as he said, a prison of your own making. So if you do put boundaries in place from day one and stand by those and put your foot down when they do get cross guys, it actually is a game changer for you. I'm not advocating for guys to go and do this. I don't think most people should live together. Look how many divorces and de facto relationships break up and guys get cleaned out. And uh, inverse to that, you know, women now making a lot of money as well. And they, some of them get cleaned out and um, have bad experiences as well. I don't think a lot of people are suited to it. I think a lot of people, as I said, jump into relationships with people they shouldn't even be in a relationship with. They, they, they get with a girl who they find is a little bit, they might feel like they're the girl's up there and, and they're down here. Um, and they're like, yep, I've got to lock this in at all costs. So I'm going to give up whatever part of my soul and part of me who is legitimately and authentically me to try and keep this woman attracted because they fear that if that woman finds out that you like certain things or you're into certain things or you like to do certain stuff with your spare time, they won't like you anymore. And then you're in a jail. And then you end up just pandering and, and running around and uh, becoming a, a house servant. Anyway, guys, about halfway through. Um, so if you're enjoying the content today, please sub to the channel, aiming for 7,000 subs. Um, and the best way you can help me, guys, is just watching the videos through um, as long as you want to, but to the end, ideally, as that pushes out uh, me to more viewers on YouTube. And if you do want to check out my Patreon, guys, I've got plenty of exclusive content over there as well. Uh, link in the description and pinned comment. That she knows now your balls are in a vice to some extent. You're not... It's not as easy for you to cheat. You're not going to be able to cheat. Not that you necessarily would have done, but you understand what I mean. It, like that, that potential is now cut off. And because she knows that she's got your balls in a vice, that inherently makes you somewhat less attractive. It makes you somewhat less of the prize. She doesn't have to win you anymore. She's already won you over. And you know what it's like. As soon as somebody's won somebody over, then they're like, yeah, okay. What's the next challenge? On to the next thing. You know, what's the next shiny, exciting challenge that I have to overcome in my life? It's no longer this dude. This dude was this carefree alpha who was going around doing his own thing. You know, being a Chad, whatever you were doing before. And now... Being an alpha, being a Chad, you know all of that terminology, guys. It does make me cringe uh, quite a little bit. But I think what's he trying to say? That you're an independent guy who just did did what he wanted. You're living life on your terms. And you need to maintain that um, and set boundaries that you're still going to do those things. And if a girl doesn't want you because you want to live your life the way you want to live, you shouldn't be living with them. Because once again, you're going to end up like a caged little poodle, all right? I've been there and done that. I've made this mistake before, guys. Um, with uh, a girl I live with who became my wife, um, who didn't last very long, it was only a couple of years. My friends joke around that I become like Tony Abbott, who's like a uh, politician over here, really straight laced. And I was, I was acting really straight laced. I wasn't being me. I wasn't being authentically me. And I was miserable, guys. So I know, I know I say guys do these things. I've done it. I'm telling you right now. I know uh, friends of mine who tell me they've basically done the same thing. Right, you, you get in the line, you be a good little boy, you move in, and then you've got this life where you're getting bossed around, um, run by the jail warden. But it's of your own making. He made a really good point, and that's a really good point um, that he said, and I really agree with that. I know about, if you're a guy who likes to womanize um, and cheat and do things like that, um, I don't judge guys. I used to live that life. I used to do all sorts of bad shit, right? I used to do all sorts of scummy things um, back in the day, right? If you're that kind of guy, you shouldn't be having a girlfriend. You shouldn't be having um, cohabitation scenarios going on where through your own bad behavior, you can blow something up. And then, as you guys know, guys, a woman scorned is going to absolutely wreck you, right? And, you know, that punishment doesn't fit that particular crime, but that's what's going to happen if you're that kind of guy and you get into a cohabitation story and you still want to play around on the side. He made another point about women not being able to go and do stuff. Women, women are good at cheating, right? What I learned, guys, in my womanizing days was I ended up being with many women who ended up telling me after the fact that they had long-term boyfriends or husbands, 
right? They are fantastic at cheating because guys never suspect them of it. They never think that they're that their girl that they love and who's straight laced and uh, so against cheating and all this sort of gaslighting stuff that they'll say is out there actually doing that to you. You just wouldn't think of it, right? And because you don't know, you're not on your toes, a lot of the things slide. They get away with it. They um, they're so sneaky, guys. Apps, hidden apps on phones, and all this sort of stuff for communicating with guys. Don't you worry about that. It happens. So that's why I keep going about vetting. And, and I know you can't truly vet somebody because I know a lot of you guys who are watching, you've been married and you thought you, you vetted the right girl and you're married for 10, 15, 20 years and you had a really hard time and things eroded over time. Sure, th- those things happen. But I'm talking about these guys who get with girls over six months and move in and, and shack up and create a life for somebody all based off false pickup artistry, mind game stuff from the start. You know, it's just gonna it's just gonna end badly. I've got nothing against womanizing. I've got nothing against doing that. Go and do it, mate. Womanize to your heart's content. It's great. I did it. I had heaps of fun doing it. You learn a lot about women that way if you can pull it off. Um, but yeah, that also gets old too, guys. Um, yeah. Oh, I've got him locked down. He has to put the bins out every Thursday night. He has to clean the potato peelings off the off the kitchen sink. He has to load the dishwasher. His life, mate. Yeah, I've got him beta-ized, you know? I've got him <laughs> locked down like a nice little beta cuck, and there's nothing he can do about it, okay? Hey, beta cuck. <laughs> I love that saying, but you're a beta cuck because you put the bins out. Come on. Like, this is a bit of this um, macho sort of posturing. You're going to put the bins out anyway if you're living by yourself. You're going to wash the potato peeler anyway, right? But I know what he's trying to say. I know you're trying to, a lot of women will nag and cut you down over time and you end up being a, a little, as I said, a locked up little poodle in a house, in a cage, right? It's just about having boundaries, saying no, pushing back on stuff realistically, um, reasonably, I mean, right? You can't just say, oh, she can't go, oh, can you just help me put the bins out? No, fuck you, bitch, I'm not doing that, you know? See if I like at you. And so the power, the leverage that you once had has been completely given over, okay? And... Ironically, what often happens is that women then become less attracted as they chip away at your autonomy, as they chip away at your That's true. singleness of purpose as, as a man, okay? As you fall more into her frame, you become less attractive because you've dropped your guard, all right? And then she's ironically now comparing you to you know the alpha chad personal trainer at equinox who <laughs> isn't living with his girlfriend because he hasn't got cucked out like that you know he Cut. is young footloose fancy free and careless and then you're thinking well that's really unfair because it was her idea that we moved in together in the first place and now she's resenting me for it that's really unfair well yes it is but that's the way things go okay which is why you shouldn't move in with her in the first place now i've only lived with a couple of women in my life both times it was a disaster it's not something i'm keen to repeat um but the thing he's not going to go on and tell you why because there's always a reason why things don't work out right i'm not defending women here women women can act really shitty right I've made hundreds of videos on it. I've made like 150 videos, guys. But I'm, I'm trying to be balanced here with some of the information to get spouted because guys watch this stuff and then they become too extreme on the other way, right? So you're never going to be able to have a nice girlfriend or, or et cetera. You know, not, not have the skills to be able to even try and vet someone because there are good women out there. There are very few of them. I always say, I reckon that's one in a thousand is going to be suited for you. Right. One in a thousand women that you go on dates with or match with on a dating app or whatever it is, is going to be suited for you and is going to add to your life. Right? The rest are basically for the scrap heap. That's just the reality of it. So it's about being patient. Right? As I keep banging on about guys rushing in, you rush in, you're moving with a chick over six months, you get married real quick, you have a baby, then you're trapped. And you're in this life all of a sudden that you don't want to have. And you can't get out. Or it's very expensive to get out and it's life-destroying to get out. You've got kids who are dependent on you. You've got a woman, you're stuck with her, you're looking at her, you're sitting on the couch looking at her going, why am I here? How do I end up in this? It's like all of a sudden that two years has been fast-forwarded and you've got bloody babies and married to some chick that was initially just going to be a hookup because number one, you couldn't say no to pressure. A lot of guys can't. They want to keep the girl on the hook, right? They, they have a girl, they're enjoying the sexy time, it's all fun, they think it's going to last forever. And they think, well... 
she's pressuring me, so she must be flattered. I'm flattered by that. She must really want me and want to be uh, the perfect little good wife to me for the rest of my life. Now, a lot of these girls just like the idea of nesting because there isn't anything to lose for them, guys, right? Now, about getting cut down, if you let it happen to you, it's going to happen to you. It happened to me, um, but I let it happen to me. So I've got to take the accountability for that and say, going, what did I learn from that, right? Boundaries, 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 guys. You've got to have them. And if they cross the line, let them know they cross the line. Give them a warning, but let them know that there's an actual repercussion for any bad behavior or behaviors for you that just are not on, all right? Because a lot of guys, they say nothing. The bad behavior after bad behavior, you cop it in silence, all right? Because you don't want to upset the apple cart, as they say. And then you complain about it. Living together just takes away all of the excitement. It takes away all of the mystique that you would otherwise have. That's and true. I believe is essential in a sexual relationship. Now, you might say, yes, Troy, but it's not all about sex. It's not all about, you know, there's so much more to it than that. How could you be so shallow? And yes, you're right. Of course, it's not all about sex. But attraction, and attraction is rooted in sex, okay, is at the base of any kind of romantic relationship. That's just the way it is. Particularly in the modern world, because we're not now in some sort of arranged marriage type situation, for well, in the West anyway, where people, you know, it's a contract. It is very much based in romantic love, and romantic love is founded in attraction. And when that attraction goes, there's very little incentive for the parties to remain in the relationship, right? It's just like, well... That's how you get trapped being a roommate, but... I think, I think, look, the reality is, guys, that it happens over time. Time's a killer. So if you think you're going to be getting that three times a week, four times a week, five times a week, just enthusiastic, dropping neck, deep throat, anal, double fisting stuff that you're getting straight off the bat when you both are so excited to see each other, you're both just, you're pumped. It's just not reality. <laughs> you know, it's just the way it goes. So then guys, they're getting that and all of a sudden they move in and they're like, oh, what the hell? Oh, no one told me about this. Well, I'm telling you about it. This guy's telling you about it. Other guys are telling you about it. It's how do you manage it and mitigate it? Regardless of what anyone says, yeah, I'm going to get guys in the comments, yeah, I bang my, I've been married for 40 years and I bang my wife five times a week. Well, I good on you. I like this an exception, but it's just not the reality for most guys. And he did make a point. He said, it's not all about, people say it's not all about sex. I happen to agree with that. If you actually meet someone who's really good and on the same page as you, it's not all about sex. But you still need to have that. You still need to be maintaining that. Because as guys, we can get lazy too. I've been there, done that. I've been in moods where I don't feel like doing it and the girl's been up for it, right? That's a recipe for disaster if you do that long term, right? You get comfortable as well. Guys get comfortable. So it isn't all women are bad. Women move in and shuck up. Guys and girls, they both drop the ball. And that's how you end up in those dead bedroom scenarios, right? That we all hear about. So I think he makes some really good points in the video, guys. But, um, you know, putting it all back on just the chick, you need to look at, be balanced. I like to be balanced, guys. Um, how are we as men being accountable for ending up in those situations in the first place? Well, I'm not feeling it anymore. I'm not, the feels have gone. You know, the, the, uh, the butterflies, the butterflies aren't there anymore. So guess what? I'm going to up and leave. I'm going to go off with yeah. the dude from the Equinox gym you know she might say so it's funny that so these guys will say oh yeah the guy from um you know the chad and all they're going off the chat even if that does happen they, they these women quickly find out that that was a very very bad decision so they might have had a really good guy right uh, as a lot of you guys watching you've been through some bad times um and they've gone off for the more exciting life because women, a lot of women don't think about long-term stuff as well. They think about emotions, how they're feeling. They might be feeling flat with their relationship for a couple of months, three months. They start talking to their girlfriends, their single girlfriends, and their single girlfriends are telling them all about their dating life and how they're traveling around and, hey, you should come with me. Why don't we go live somewhere together overseas and we can live this awesome lifestyle? Bang, they're gone. But then they end up six months, 12 months, a couple of years down the line on dating apps trying to find and replace what they had initially. So you got to understand female nature as well. They're, they do run on emotions, guys. They do run on short-term thinking most of the time. I'm not saying all of them do, but it is a very common story, what I just said. So don't move in. Don't move in together because when you move in together, it's going to fuck it up royally, <laughs> okay? And you don't want that to happen. And also as well, it... You would think, well, okay, we're going to live together. It's going to be really nice. And, 
you know, it's going to calm me down and I'm going to have a lot more time to work on my mission, you know, do the stuff that I need to do. Not necessarily the case, because what you might find is that she's nagging you to paint the spare room and to regrout the bathroom and to, you know, retile the whatever. And actually, you end up doing a lot of domestic bollocks the you boundaries boys so if you if you're if you're running a business or well like these guys like to have side business side hustles or a, like myself i've got a youtube channel which 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 requires a lot of work instead of a boundary saying you're doing that no matter what and you just go and do it it's just what you do right and you'll be respected for putting your foot down and chasing things because what he's saying and what he's talking about and probably what his experience is and what was similar to mine and a lot of your guys at home is you got in with a chick you moved in and you became a little, what do you say, beta, cuck, soy boy, whatever words I like to throw around, right? You didn't have any backbone. You didn't push back. And you weren't what she thought she was getting to. That's just the reality. Probably wouldn't have done otherwise or you wouldn't have found necessary to do otherwise. That just gets in the way of you working on yourself as a man and actually getting towards the goals that you have for yourself. So don't move in with her. It's a load of bollocks. You'll only regret it. You'll probably end up splitting up five minutes later anyway. <laughs> and you can thank me later. If you enjoyed the video, give me a like. Yeah, anyway, look, look. as I said, a lot of these guys, you know, will say certain things like, don't ever move in. Don't ever get married. I'm not going to tell you guys that. I'm going to say, be risk averse, guys. Follow your gut and have boundaries, right? And you can be successful in doing these things. And they're all challenging. Moving in with women, living with women is challenging. Being married to a woman, it's challenging. So if you're not ready for that, because what a lot of guys do is they believe in uh, the, all the fairy tale. You're going to get this little wife. You're going to get married. Everything changes. Everything becomes perfect. Your wife or your girlfriend, um, who might have been acting up or might have been a bit of a pain in the ass, all of a sudden when you put a ring on it, she's going to become a good little housewife. That's just not what happens. They just get worse. So if you're getting with girls that are like that, these high maintenance types, you're in for a world of pain. And that's what he's talking about. Anyway, guys, that's enough from me. I hope you enjoyed the content. Put your experiences in the comments for the guys. Um, yeah, guys, let's um, let's connect, share notes, share information, um, and so we can make better decisions going forward. Cheers.